evening. We return again to the story of Caius, Spellsword, Dunmer, Eternal Champion, Exile, Tomorrowwind, Member of the Blades, currently lost in the Ashlands. I'll admit I wasn't expecting that. So we need to go east until we find a lake somewhere. Or of course just enjoy the uh, the journey. <laughs>
So, I need to convince uh, Laroar ba uh, Baraloth to join the guild. I need to collect dudes at Panabi. So maybe I should look at that. Right, and we need to find out about the uh, Kamara Tong at some point. That presumably will happen at, uh... At one of the cities. Alright, I mean, anything that looks like a lake is either here... Or here. So we're gonna keep going east until I find something until I find some kind of alternative. If we don't find our destination, that's fine. We'll just enjoy the journey. Ancestral tomb, there is the possibility that there is a ghost waiting here, which will be a problem due to my lack of magicka. But if I can rest here, so much the better. Alright, this is a worry. here. Thank <laughs> you. 
to, um, to heal. I did, of course, forget that. <laughs> did forget that I have potions, so once more. But this time using, uh, using all the resources I have available. It's a uh, low condition. Just don't seem to have anything else that's better.
for now. Clearly I need to find a village soon though. sure that cuirass is not yeah that's not happening Take a minute to see my Yeah, so it does look like intelligence governs the amount of magicka that I have, which is also a problem. So I'm going to need to find a balance between um, strength, willpower, and intelligence. Or alternatively just keep leveling those up. I 
still have no idea why I'm hanging onto this skull, but it makes me feel better. works um all right i mean i suppose getting rid of the expensive shirt makes the most sense at this point I have a feeling I'm probably just going to wind up back at this menu. Well, actually, the chitin dagger is... So I know one of the books was Origin of the Mage's Guild, and I think there was something else. So there was Origins of the Mages Guild. I genuinely don't remember the other ones, though. So we'll start with... Actually, I seem to remember we read this already. So I don't know if I just got a second copy or not. How you should know us. Death, defeat, and fear. We do not die, we do not fear death. Destroy the body, and the animus is cast into the darkness, but the animus returns. But we are not all brave. We feel pain and fear it. We feel shame and fear it. We feel loss and fear it. We hate the darkness and fear it. The scamps have small thoughts and cannot fear greatly. The vermi have no thoughts and cannot fear. The dremora have deep thoughts and must master fear to overcome it. 
the clan bond. We are not born, we have not fathers nor mothers, yet we have kin and clans. The clan form is strong, it shapes body and thought. In the clan form is strength and purpose. The oath bond. We serve by choice, we serve the strong so that their strength might shield us. Clans serve by long practice, but practice may change. Dremora have long served Dagon, but this is not always so. Practice is secure when oath bonds are secure, and trust is shared. When oath bonds are weak, there is pain and shame and loss and darkness and great fear. How do we think about man? Perhaps you find Scamps comic and Vermai brutish. How then do you imagine we view you humans? You are prey, and we are the huntsmen. The Scamps are the hounds, and the Vermai are the beaters. Your flesh is sweet, and the chase is diverting. As you may sometimes praise the fox or hare, admiring its cunning and speed, and lamenting as the hounds tear its flesh, so do we sometimes admire our prey and secretly applaud when it cheats our snares or eludes pursuit. But, like all worldly things, you will, uh, you will in time wear and be used up. You age, grow ugly, weak, and foolish. You are always lost, uh, late or soon. Sometimes the prey turns upon us and bites. It is a small thing, when wounded or weary, we fly away to restore. Sometimes a precious thing is lost, but that risk all, uh, makes the chase all the sweeter. Man's mystery. Man is mortal and doomed to death and failure and loss. This lies beyond our comprehension. Why do you not despair? Passage from the text, the vagaries of, va sorry, vagaries of Magica. But take care, lest power enfeeble the fundaments, and curtail the flow through the conjuries, except when functions are warranted, and safeguard uh, that the congeries shall not be abused by prideful wizards, confident in their skill and blinded by their ambitions. In this, hold the ordering of the congeries among the oldest and most trusted of mages, and make, uh, make secure this ordering through arcane codes and keys to confound even the most cle clever students. The storals uh, must be most carefully guarded, for how often have even the wise lusted to overreach their bodies and souls with vitality and mana, and so trust the magicka fountains, uh, and so also, and also must the magicka fountains be damped and banked, sanctioning their endangering, oh, or sorry, their engendering, only to the reconsecration of essential arcane engines and templates, and then only by common assent of the council. It's probably a really long time to find <laughs> those two books, but... Alright, so we have a trap and we have a lock. I don't believe I have a probe anymore. Gain knowledge from this book, your blunt weapons has increased to 16. The Hope of uh, the Rhetoran by Tariel Neerith. One of the few magical arts the psychics of Arteum have kept to themselves away from the common spells and schools of the Mages Guild is the gift of divination. Despite this, or perhaps because of it, omens and prophecies abound in Tamriel, some of substance, others of pure folly, and still others so ambiguous as to be unverifiable. There are still other prophecies kept secret from the prophecies of Drojizad uh, in Elsewhere and the Neverin in Morrowind to the Elder Scrolls themselves. The Nord nobility have a tradition of having omens read for their children. In general, these readings are of the obscure variety. One of my acquaintances told me that her parents were told, for example, that their daughter would have her life rescued by a snake and so gave her the name of Serpentkin in a special ceremony. And this young lady, Era, uh, Area Valcor Serpentkin, was indeed saved by a snake many years later, when an assassin, creeping on her, stepped on a Dancewyrm Viper. Occasionally, omens seem to be almost purposefully misleading, as if Boethia has crafted them as traps. I recall one particularly, many, many years ago, 
A male child was born into House Redoran. It was a very different, uh, difficult birth, and the mother was delirious and near death by the time that it was over. She chanted just as her son came into the world, and she passed from it. Fortune has smiled this day, not, fr uh, not frowned. My child will be mighty in mind and in arm. He shall bring, us, uh, bring hope to House Redoran. Neither spell nor blade shall hurt the man, nor illness nor poison cause any harm. His, pl his blood shall never drop on the ground. The boy, named Andis, was indeed extraordinary. It was, he was never ill and never suffered so much as a scratch all through his childhood. He was also quite intelligent and strong, which, combined with his inv invulnerability, caused many to call him, after his mother's omen, the Hope of the, uh, of the Redoran. Of course, anyone who is called the Hope of Redoran will eventually develop some taint of impertinence, and it wasn't long before he had enemies. His worst enemy was his co cousin Athan, who had borne much abuse at the hands of Andis. Primary among the grudges was that Athan had been sent to Riyadh to com uh, complete his education at Andis' insistence. When Athan returned from Hammerfell, it was because the death of his father, who had also been a counselor, uh, who had also been a counselor of the house. Athan was old enough to take his seat in the council, but Andis claimed the seat as well, saying that his cousin had been gone too long from Morrowind and didn't understand politics as he did. The majority of the house agreed with Andis, wanting to see the hope of Redoran rise quickly. Athan exercised his right to combat his cousin for the seat. No one thought he had any chance of winning, of course, but the battle was scheduled to commence the following morn. Andis horned and dined and drank with the councillors that night, confident that his place in the house was secured and the hopeful new dawn of House Redoran was rising. Athan retired to his castle with his friends, Andis's enemies, and his servants he had brought from Hammerfell. Athan and his friends were discussing the duel morosely when one of his old teachers, a warrior called uh, Shiridi, came into the hall. She had grown quite proud of her student over the years in Hammerfell, proud enough to accompany him across the Empire to his family's lands, and wanted to know why they had so little confidence in his odds in the battle. They explained to her Andis's uncommon blessings and the nature of his mother's omen. If he can't be harmed by disease, poison, magicka, and his blood can, blood can never be spilled, what hope have I of ever besting him? cried Athan. Have you remembered nothing I have taught you? replied uh, Shardi. Is there, uh, there no weapon you can think of that will slay without blood? Are swords and spears and arrows the only items in your arsenal? Athan quickly realized the weapon Shardi was speaking of, but it seemed absurd. Not only absurd, but pathetic and primitive. Still, it was the only hope that he had. All that night, Shardi trained him with the, in the art and techniques, showing him the various swings and stances her people had developed in Albion Gora, counterattacks, feints, and blocks imported from Yokuda, the classic one and two-handed grips for most, uh, the most ancient weapon in history. The cousins faced one another the next morning, and never have two combatants looked so une unevenly matched. Andis's entrance brought great cheer, for only, uh, not only was he much beloved as the hope of Redoran, but as his victory was a foregone conclusion, most wanted to be in good standing with him. His shining mail and blade drew, the admi drew admiration and awe. By contrast, Athan drew a gasp of surprise and only a smattering of polite applause. He appeared costumed and armed like a barbarian. As Shardi had suggested, Athan followed Andis to, allowed Andis to attack first. The hope of Redoran was eager to finish the battle and take the power he deserved quickly. The blade pushed by Andis's mighty arm slashed across uh, pushed by Andis's mighty arm slashed across Athan's chest, but shallowly and before it could be counter swung, Athan knocked it back with his own weapon. When Athan attacked and wounded Andis, the hope of Redoran was so surprised by being hurt for the first time in his life he dropped his sword. The less said about the end of the battle, the better. Suffice it to say that Athan, wielding a simple club, battered Andis to death without spilling a drop of blood. Athan took his father's seat as counselor, and it was then said that the hope, uh, the hope and the omen referred to Athan, not Andis. After all, had Andis not tried to take the counselor's seat away from his cousin Athan, being not very ambitious, might never have tried to get it. Uh, it can certainly be argued that way, I suppose. Sorry, I um, messed up the reading by that a little bit at the end. All right, still encumbered. I do want to keep the books because they do also tend to be somewhat valuable. But I do need to find space. Yeah, the mace is too heavy.
So I believe this might be it for the, the tomb. Thank <laughs> you. 
I think I'm just gonna head back. See if I can find an alternative path. says but
Ascended to level four, it's all suddenly obvious to you. You just have to concentrate. All that energy and time you've wasted, it's a sin. But without the experience you've gained, taking risks, taking responsibility for failure, how could you have understood? All right, so I don't feel too bad about this because I'm choosing in terms of maximizing with strength. I have intelligence, willpower, agility, speed are my two times, so choosing between these is likely what I would have gone for anyway.
surprised that thing didn't die. Because at this point I'll be using magic as far as I can. assassin as well. <laughs> Disease off of that. It's 
So at this point, I think my approach is going to be to try and um, get to whatever building I can to rest, repair, and then we'll see if we can double back to Bal, if not directly Balmora, at least try to find some place um, where I can catch my bearings again. Sorry for less dialogue right now, but it's a little hard to commentate the experience of being lost. Again, the effort is going to be to try and find some place that I can... Um sell off some items, repair some others, and use that as an opportunity to um, find the location that I was originally trying to get to. This will be the same strategy as before, wait until it actually comes into range and then fight when it when it's forced.
this point, I also need to heal. Your feet. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is not going to work. or not, but I seem to be getting very unlucky. <laughs> It's not the place I'm supposed to be, but it's likely going to be a spot that I can um, sort of rest and regroup. in.
Dunmer stronghold to the south. If I head north on the path between the hills. There's the Dunmer hold, stronghold to the south. Yeah, I think I'm going to head there. I don't know you. What do you want? Who are you? I'm Tevin Athen, barbarian and lawman of the great House Redoran. Tell me more about House Redoran. I belong to House Redoran and serve honestly. Very well. What can you tell me about Morrowind? Worn out weapons and armor work poorly. Repair them yourself if you have some skill, or take them to a smith for repair. What have you heard generally? Have you noticed for all its proclamations about protecting the rights and property and preserving law and order, the Imperial Legion does little enough to capture and prosecute abolitionists? It's a bit hypocritical, don't you think? Any advice? If you're heading into backcountry, always carry a couple of restore health, restore fatigue, cure disease, and cure blight potions with you. What about any secrets? Talk to everyone. Talk is cheap. Ask questions. If you don't ask, you'll never learn about cave rats. The cave rat is a subterranean variety of the hardy, abundant sca hunter scavenger. Rat meat is tough and greasy with an unpleasant odor and taste. Nevertheless, it is cheap, abundant, and nutritious, and palatable when cooked into a stew or masked by, by strong spices. What can you tell me about the Dunmer? We are the dark-skinned, red-eyed elven people of Morrowind. The westerners call us dark elves, but we prefer to call ourselves Dunmer. Guards keep the peace and chase down criminals. Good to know. Can you tell about ne the never the Nerevarine? The Ashlanders have a prophecy that one day a reincarnation of the le legendary hero oh, Nerevar will unite the Dunmer against the invaders and restore the ancient Dark Elf nation. But the Tribunal Temple says that this is a false and profane superstition, and the Ordinators deal uh, mercilessly with those who profess such beliefs. What about Solstheim? Terrible place, I've heard. There's a boat from Cool if you have any reason to go. Can we go right now? There any service? No escape. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Who is this? Alright, at this point I'm just gonna run in and see how far I can go, because this clearly is not... <laughs> I thought this was a town. <laughs> Was it the hat I 
was wearing. I can talk about this guy with this guy. What is it, Outlander? So clearly, I'm not supposed to be in this place. Our instruction said to go north. I'm just going to take a minute here and see if I can uh, harvest anything. The answer is no. So I still need to be a little bit wary because I don't have any direct means of um, protecting myself other than Magicka. rather than fight it.
I always thought these were supposed to be close to each other. Let's see what's going on. Anyway, sorry, I should have checked out what the mission was, not just where the location was. Alright, so we need to collect the dues. Hello, Manway. I'm fine, thank you. What can I do for you? Let's talk about those guild dues. I left the Mage's Guild and dedicated my life to studying the adaptive responses of uh, uh, quaternary variations in Oblivion streams. If Rainus Aetherus wants dues that much, why don't you just pay them yourself? I am unconcerned with such petty financial matters. Can I persuade you? Apparently, no. <laughs> Will you leave me alone if I give you uh, 2,000 septums? I cannot leave my research unattended. That'll work. I just wanted to try and bring them over what I had before. Uh... Why don't we suggest I pay the gold myself? Manway finally agreed to pay the 2,000 gold she owes. I need to deliver this gold to Renis Theris in Belmora. As much as I would like to take these uh, mushrooms and such, I will not... Um... Oh, all right. This guy isn't friendly. Death awaits you. Ah. <laughs> It's gonna auto save. Well, no, that's fine because I already have another. Uh, yeah, there's no, there's no fix in that. We'll do what we came here for, and then we'll head back. Forceful words, Dark Elf, but I'm not impressed. I only needed 60-something last time, let's give him 10. We can always use some extra coin. What do you need? I need those dues. Is there something I can do for you? Nope, apparently. <laughs> I just needed 10 bucks. I am out of here, lady. Now 
god, there's two of them. Fatigue, I seem to be failing when it's low. So I'll hang out for a bit. Clearly I can't rest in this location. But I can at least, um... destroys the immersion, that immersion by doing that um, multiple times, but I keep dying, so. just a heal. <laughs> somewhere. Apparently not. I think I'm just going to accept my fate on this one. some way out of this. Oh, this should probably be uh, saving after I complete the, the mission. just the number of cliff racers. I have magicka for some, but not all. All right, that's already a disappointment. So we run. 
think my destination was supposed to be on the left. Did I remember to save? I don't think I did. I was hoping to give this stuff the start. I don't think I have that invisibility in. Oh. Places. This is the spot I needed to be, so I'm sick. <laughs> um, seeing as I have the disease, I'm not actually going to uh, rest. I don't like you, and I don't want to talk to you. So we're looking for Larar. Something or other. I don't think I can handle anything that's trapped right now. I was rather under the impression that I was finding these people in, um, in cities. You won't win any popularity contests here, Outlander. What's your problem, anyway? If I liked you better, then I might tell you. You know what? I'm just going to accept that I'm not liked very much here and find my target and go. <laughs> Unless there's a merchant I can find. Give that a read later. You're unclean, Outlander. Get away from me and go get cured. Or stay away from me. Oh, that's... That's right. I'm sick, so... Annoying Outlander. All right. So here's a question. Not quite what I was looking to do, but exciting nonetheless. Um, let's try to use this divine intervention. diseases, right? Or are they 
there's like a shrine somewhere. Please, I don't wish to catch whatever you have. I'm just gonna... Sorry to do this, I'm just gonna take a minute to consult the wiki to see how cure disease works. Might just be a potion, I guess. There's no cure disease. You may pray at Imperial Cult Healing Altars and receive blessings, which cure common and blight diseases, cure potions, and restore uh, cure poisons and restore attributes. Non-members pay 25 drakes, newer members pay 10 drakes, while higher-ranking members receive blessings for free. Healing ardors are found in Vivek Foreign Quarter, uh, Wolverine Hall in Sadrith Mora, Fort Buckmarth, Fort Moonmoth, Fort Pelagiad, Fort Darius. Alderan Guild of Mages, and the Imperial Chapels in Ebonheart. Where am I again? Alright, so there is supposed to be a shrine here. Ah, there we go. I don't know if I lost the attributes, but... I'm willing to spend that money. All right. We're back on track. Um, don't know if I had any duplicates of my books. Sure isn't worth a lot. I mean, now I have um, 
alchemy tools, so I probably shouldn't be so ready to um, sell these reagents. At least until I figure out how they work. Scrap metal definitely takes up a lot of space. I mean, honestly, at this point, I might as well keep the magic. some repairs. There we go. By the gods, you're half dead. Yeah, heading to the shrine for that, don't worry. I still have the 2,000. No. Probably just wasted money on that. I was hoping to get uh, some kind of healing. Special Flora of Tamriel by Hardin the Herbalist. Uh, the poppy, both black and white varieties, may be found growing wild in the mountains of Hammerfell. Their succulent pods are often the only nourishment for adventurers who find themselves in the wilderness without rations. It is said that black and white poppies imbibed together have magical properties. When they are crushed and mixed in with the milk of the agile-footed mountain goat, the resulting potion al uh, allows the user to glide safely above ground. Firefern, a perennial herb, is uh, native to the province of Morrowind. The flowers are inconspicuous and often hidden. The glossy, evergreen foliage and the blossoms are resistant to conditions of high heat and bright light. A petal from this plant, placed under the adventurer's tongue, will provide protection from the heat and fire of la the lava pits and thermal streams around Dagoth Ur. Dragon's Tongue, a common name for the fern-like herb found in the Black Marsh, is especially prolific around the area under the Lutherius Swamp. It is a beautiful wild flower whose name comes from the fire red fronds that protect its golden uh, efflorescence. As pretty as it is, however, it is a deadly poison to most li living beings and needs to be avoided by adventurers, especially unprotected ones, as it is lethal to the touch. It is said, however, that Argonians can handle the plant and use the sap derived from its roots to enhance their endurance. Domica redwort is an herb grown in many resi uh, residents of the Val Valenwood for their uh, for their beautiful and showy flowers. They attain a height of about three feet and sport feathery leaves. The flowers are usually bright red. In addition to their beauty, they are said to have the magical ability of enhancing the appearance of anyone who carries and wears one of the blooms. Ironwood nut is a hard-shelled fruit that comes from the ironwood trees growing deep in the forests of Skyrim. The wood of these trees is hard as metal after which, uh, as the metal is after which it is named. The very rare black variety of ironwood is said to produce a nut which is very succulent and believed to greaten the strength of the adventurer who is able to crack its shell and partake of it. 
The ginkgo leaves, which are found along the banks and rivers of lakes in Hammerfell, are most inconspicuous, only their peculiar half-moon shape making them noticeable. The edible foliage is very sweet and quite tasty. Legend has it that when mixed properly with the pulp of the aloe plant, the resulting concoction has the ability of increasing one's stamina for a short while. The somnilis fern can be found in the swamps of Black Marsh. The fronds of this plant are light green and quite delicate. Picking a frond can be very difficult, as they usually crumble to the touch, but once retrieved, it can be used to put an enemy to sleep for a short while by passing it under their nose. Arrowroot is a thick rubbery tuber which can be found in the province of Aylenwood. The plant is quite difficult to find, as its above-ground foliage is very meager and scrawny, but the root itself can be most beneficial to the gatherer, as it has magical properties. The paste made from grinding the root is quite wholesome, and can improve the user's accuracy with a bow and arrow or other missile weapon. Nightshade is reputed to be a very poisonous herb. However, the variety found in many parts of Elsewhere is cherished by Khajiits, who have taken up careers in thievery. Many Khajiits will tuck a piece of nightshade inside their armor to indicate their ability, uh, in increase their abilities to skulk, hide, and become invisible. I was hoping I would find out what to do with alchemy, but... I'll take my chances with the outdoors. I'm listening. So I didn't exactly want to go all the way around and back to Balmora, but it won't hurt for me to um, stock up again. Even though I wound up lost in the Ashlands last time, the fact that I sort of know where we're going now will, um... It'll hopefully make the journey a little bit more palatable. storage in Belmora is going to be, so give me a chance to free up a little bit of space. Have you convinced Lara or Bariloth to join us? Do you have Monway's guild dues? I have the dues, at least. Do you have the 2,000 septums that Manwe owes? I do. Good work, Caius. You're the first journeyman to get Manwe to pay her dues. I knew I could rely on you. Did you also convince Larar Bariloth to join us? Mm, I'm still working on that. Alright, restore magic is going to be a life. I'm just going to take all of this. I believe I already have Spirit of the Daedra, although it is worth quite a bit. I'm very happy to make your acquaintance. You meet our requirements, but you have not yet completed uh, the duties expected of an evoker. All right. I can't blame a guy for trying. I believe the Fighters Guild may have restocked as well. Too exciting to be honest, but all right. So I'm going to try and use Caius's 
the other Caius. Um, the one spelled I-U-S. Going to use his place as a temporary storage. Assuming you're going to find it again. I'd love to talk to all these people, but I still have another task. chests or something like that, but that might count as stealing, so what I will do instead is um, put my books on his bench. question is if I want to try any of this alchemy. And I'm going to do a C just on the odd chance that these items despawn. No, looks like we're good for now. So, I have the unenviable task of making my way back to that location. Greeting, citizen. I'm Balin Omival. This town is Belmora, the council seat of House Hlalu. We're loyal citizens of the Empire and proud of it. Well, most of us, anyway. Are you looking for someone in particular? Are you looking for services? Is there some specific place you'd like to visit? Would you like me to tell you about my trade? Go ahead, tell me about your trade, but I'm in a bit of a hurry. I'm an assassin. Killing is my profession. I'm discreet, efficient, and reliable. 
In Morrowind, the assassin's trade is an ancient and honorable profession, restricted by a rigid code of conduct and operating strictly within the law. Because I am discreet, I prefer shorter blades for swift, close, and personal work, while the marksman weapons like throwing stars and throwing knives are more suitable for stealth and surprise. Interesting. Can you tell me anything about the Morag Tong, then? Morag Tong is the ancient and traditional assassin's guild of the Dunmer. We provide three varieties of execution, public, private, and house war. We only recruit candidates of proven skill and honor, and only Grandmaster Eno Halu in Vivek can authorize new members from joining the, uh, to join the Morag Tong. Tell me more about joining, not that I want to. If you wish to join us, you must seek out Eno Halu, Grandmaster of the Morag Tong in Vivek. What about the Kamora Tong? The Kamora Tong is an old criminal uh, syndicate here in Morrowind. And, as everyone around here knows, they're in a gang war with the Thieves Guild. In, the, uh, in Belmora, the Kamora Tong hangs out in the corner club called the Council Club. Watch yourself if you go in there. They're not nice people. Well, now... I'm interested in seeing if I've seen the Council Club. All right, it's on my way out. Definitely up for a fight if it comes to it. Also, it's two in the morning, so it's perfect to dispense a little justice. Hello, friend. I'm Thanlin Veles. Welcome to Belmora. If you have a question, I'll be happy to answer it. Or try, anyway. And if it's just a little advice you'd like, that's fine, too. Well, let's start with that. Do you want advice, Outlander? Stay clear of the Kamoro Tong. We don't like Outlanders. Tell me more about the Kamoro Tong, then. We're just a society of businessmen. We're Dunmer, and we're proud. We're tired of seeing Morrowind run by out outsiders who understand nothing about Morrowind, and we're tired of trying to explain this over and over again to ignorant outlanders. You keep calling me that. An outlander is anyone born and raised outside Morrowind. You, and the Kamoro Tong, doesn't like outlander outlanders. Thanks for asking. Good day. I'm Banner Saren, publican of the Council Club here in Belmora. We rent beds. I have a limited selection of goods for barter. If you're new here, I can also tell you where to look for other services or a specific place nearby. If you're looking for someone in particular, I may be able to help. Tell me about these bad people that... Oh, never mind. I mind my own business. Why don't you mind yours, Outlander? Tell me about the Kimono Tong. All right. Looks like I'm getting the same story from all of them. Hello, Caius. I'm Sovor Trandall, and this is Belmora. I don't believe we've met. Is there something I can do for you? You can start by telling me more about the Kamona Tong. Hmm. What about you? Yes, Outlander? Seems like everyone has the same answer. I'll maybe see if the Thieves Guild have anything to say about this, but, um...
wealth beyond measure, Outlander. You know what, I'll save that, uh, that club for another, another visit. and past Fort Moth Moon Moth for a start. Obviously I don't have the divine intervention or anything, so this is going to be um, a bit of a higher risk journey. fix. So memory serves the bridge I need to go over is actually over this hill. Be 
figured destruction magic is my alternative to, um... Not exactly alternative to restoration, but... It's my slightly more efficient use of magic as a way for me to do restoration. case. It's partially just so I can preserve my um, my magic and my stamina. Storm magic has some potions to uh, keep me busy.
Try and take a shortcut by going over the hills. that cliff racer I'll be happy but seems like a remote possibility something did find me, but Obviously, um, a bit wounded and my magic is low, but that's partly because I know I will be able to rest when I want. Oh boy. <laughs> I don't have an immediate and 
sensors for healing, but I should be able to do enough damage to seal the deal. Alright. That was lucky. First thing I want to do is wait for my fatigue to get up because I believe if it does affect my um, my healing ability, I'm gonna to want to take my time on that. in this sword by the end of this, but... Alright, so I am slightly curious if I'm just able to heal. They don't seem to have committed some kind of crime, so that's good. I haven't much time, so be quick about this. Could you tell me who you are? I am Mael Broles, spellsword and hireling of the great house Telvani. What rumors have you heard? At first it seemed the fuss about the Never uh Nerevine sorry. Nerevarin prophecy was just a silly superstition. Then I learned that the Dunmer had been waiting for Lord uh, Nerevar to come back for centuries. The Incarnate, they call it. Every few years, an Ashlander appears, and the tribes call him the Incarnate. And then the temple goes out, hunts him down, and reveals him as a fake. Why does the temple worry so much about it? Any advice? If you want to talk with a spell, uh, sorry. If you want to talk with a spell sword with extensive experience in Morrowind, talk to Strillin uh, Macro at the barracks in Nisus. He served with several garrisons on Bradenfell, knows the island and its people, and doesn't mind talk taking time out to talk with anyone who shares his interest in the profession. Very good to know. To know. What about secrets? How do you recognize a Daedric shrine? Well, they've got long funny names like Asher, uh, Asher Nabibi or Zen, uh, Z Zane Traris? Zane Tiraris. Some are well-known sites like Ald Sotha and Bad, uh, Balfell, and stone and, and stone and architecture is unmistakable. Big, dark, gray-green stone ruins, funny angles, funny markings, and patterns on stone. Weird oval crooked doors, and inside, funny angles. What about the Mage's Guild? Look for Mage's Guild halls in Belmora, Aldrun, Caldera, Wolverine Hall in Sadith Mora, and the Foreign Quarter in Vivek. Anything else you can say about Morrowind? Some Dunmer and Imperial, uh, are Imperial cult initiates. Most of them are members of the uh, tribu Tribunal Temple. Ridge's fer fervor is exceptional in the Empire compared with Morrowind's more passionate temple worshippers, and Dunmer, who adopt the Imperial cult, often share the moderation and religious tolerance of Imperial culture. Tell me more about your work as a spellsword. I'm a spellsword. I make war with spell and sword, combining the arts of the College of Restoration, the College of Alteration, the College of Destruction, with training in medium, uh, the medium armor style, in block defense and offensive disciplines of axes, blunt weapons, and long blades. 
I rely on enchanted weapons and enchanted armors to further augment my offensive and defensive abilities. This balance of steel and spell, offense and defense, mo nobility and protection is signature of the spell sword. Good to know about medium armor. I might switch it up. Anything you can tell me about Salsheim? Terrible place, I've heard. There's a boat from Cool. if you have any reason to go. I really can't help you, stranger. Well, tell me more. I am Beerthroth, acrobat and hireling of the great house Telvani. Do you know anything about the Kamora Tong? Kamora Tong have grown powerful and ruthless since Imperial occupation, and have great influence in the higher ranks of House Loughton. What about rumors? Alright, look a bit more of it is, uh, the same. Lavana Salrin at the Temple in Moleg Mar is the most knowledgeable acrobat I know. I didn't say the best acrobat. There are others who can leap higher and jump farther, but she can talk acrobat talk better than any other acrobat I've ever met. What about secrets? Buy from merchants and traders who like you. To get better prices, members of your own factions usually like you the best. What do you know about the Thieves Guild? Thieves Guild doesn't have any public guild halls, but they tend to gather in a single location, usually a corner club or a trade house, in, la uh, in larger towns. Look for guild operatives in Belmora, Aldrun, Sadrith Mora, and the Foreign Quarter of Ibeck. What? Who are you? I'm Nail, archer and hireling of the Great House Telvani. What can you tell me about Telvani? We live comfortably. Our wizard lords keep us secure and otherwise leave us alone. All I want is to be left in all we want is to be left in peace and to do as we wish. What rumors have you heard? More about the prophecy. I right. really can't help you, stranger. Let's see if we can convince you. What now? You again. Tell me more about your background. I'm Lara Belroth, sorcerer and hireling of the Great House Telvani. Tell me about being a Dunmer. We're the dark-skinned, red-eyed elven people of Morrowind. The Westerners call us Dark Elves. We prefer to call ourselves Dunmer. Tell me more about Telvani. We don't care about politics. We don't care what others think. We want to be left alone, and our wizard lords and their mer uh, mercenaries make sure that nobody bothers us. What rumors have you heard? If you noticed, for all its pro proclamations about protecting the rights of property and preserving law and order, the Imperial Legion does little enough to capture and prosecute abolitionists. It's a bit hypocritical, don't you think? What about secrets? Sadrith Mora is the best town uh, to shop for spells. That is good to know. What can you tell me about Mora? The Imperial cult brings Imperial religion to the Empire's remotest provinces. Imperial cult priests provide worship and services for the Nine Divines at Imperial shrines throughout Vranfell. Tell me about your trade. I'm a sorcerer, though my, uh, though my mas uh, mastery of special disciplines in the College of Conjuration and my private studies in the Outer Realms and the powers of principalities, I have learned to summon and command the deniz uh, their denizens to do my bidding. I do these things for coin or to suit my own interests. I am also an enchanter, enchanting items for my own use and for the use of others. My skill with enchantments also makes me more efficient in using enchanted items that I collect on research expeditions. What do you know about the Nerevarine? The Ashlanders have a prophecy that one day a reincarnation of the legendary hero, Neverar, will unite the Dunmer against invaders and restore the ancient Dark Elven nation. But the Tribunal Temple says that this is a false and profane superstition, and the Ordinators deal mercilessly with those who profess such beliefs. Would you like to join the Mages Guild? Do I look like a fool? Collect your dues from someone else, or at least give me a reason to listen to your drivel. Well... Did I mention that you look very nice in this, uh, this candlelight? Why would I want to do that? All right, how about some septums? You're too kind, Gaius. I can't refuse such a friendly gesture. I'll try and get you to 60 like the last one.
Now will you join? If I agree to join, will you leave me to my research? Fine, then I will join the Mages Guild when uh, next I'm in Belmora. Good to hear. All right, I can't read all of them, but I'll at least take a look on... Um... Hmm. The invocation of Azura was one that was helpful the last time. So good to see. I'm sure this is important, but I really must go. Who are you? All right. Reflections on Cult Worship in the Empire, from the correspondence of Cusius Placia, Imperial, uh, Imperial Trader, writing from the Vos Trade House in Vradenfell District, province of Morrowind. I've noted that the Heartlanders, like myself, uh, and assi assimilated Imperial citizens of other races tend to, uh, tend to impersonal and formal relationships with their gods and spirits. For us, cults are first and foremost social and economic organizations. We typically think of the eight divines in the most ab abstract terms, as powerful but indifferent spirits to be propitiated, and not, do not think of their relationships as personal. Notable exceptions include minor charismatic subcults of Akatosh and Dibella. The imperial cult of Tiber Septim has also a significant charismatic subcult. With the exception of the Alicean Order, which Heartlanders regard as a dark age, religious cults have played only minor parts in uh, Heartlander and Imperial history. The Septim Emperors have made it policy to limit the influence of cult authorities in aristocratic military and bureaucratic affairs. Cult worship is regarded as a private and practical matter, and public pronouncements by religious figures are not welcomed. Nordic hero cults provide a strong countercurrent to the dominant secularism of the Empire. The Imperial cult of Tiber Septim is just such a hero cult, and among the military, provincial colonists, and recently assimilated foreigners, the cult is particularly strong and personal. The Tribunal Temple in Morrowind and its predecessor, House Ancestor Cults, are, by contrast with Imperial cults, extremely intimate and personal. In Ancestor Cults, the worshipper has a direct relationship with the blood family Ancestor Spirit, and the temp uh, Temple Cultist relationship with the Tribunal is a relationship with a liv living, breathing god who walks the earth, speaks in person with priests and cultists, and whose daily actions are prescribed models for uh, daily actions of their followers. The differences in religious temperament between the Heartlanders and Morrowind, Morrowind Dunmer accounts in large part for consistent political and social misunderstanding between the two cultures. Heartlanders do not consider cult affairs as serious matters, where the Dunmer consider cult affairs, and in particular ancestral spirit veneration, to be very serious matters indeed. Heartlanders are casual and tolerant in religious matters. Dunmer are passionate and extremely intolerant. Heartlanders do not speak with their gods, and do not think that their actions are under constant review and judgment by their gods. The Dunmer feel that all, the, uh, all they think and do is under the ever-watchful eye of the tribunal and the family ancestor spirits. So again, I won't read everything, but I'll read the ones that I think might be useful or otherwise interesting. Invocation by Azura by uh, Sigalaya uh, Parrot. For 300 years, I have been a priestess of Azura, the Daedric priestess of Moonshadow, mother of the rose and queen of the night sky. Every Hoggetham, uh, which we celebrate on the 21st of First Seed, we summon her for guidance, as well as offer things of worth and beauty to her majesty. She's a cruel but wise mistress. We do not invoke her on any uh, Hoggetham troubled by thunderstorms, for on those nights, uh, for those nights belong to the Mad One, Shegarath, even if they do coincide with the occasion. Azura, at such times, understands our caution. Azura's invocation is a very personal one. I have been priestess to three other Daedric princes, but Azura, uh, but Azura values the quality of her worshippers and the truth behind our adoration of her. When I was a dark elven maid of sixteen, I joined my grandmother's coven, which were uh, worshippers of Moleg Bal, uh, the schemer uh, prince, uh, princess. Blackmail, extortion, and bribery are as much the weapons of the witches of Moleg Bal as is dark magic. The invocation of Moleg Bal is held on the twentieth of Evening Star, except during stormy weather. This ceremony is seldom missed, but Moleg Bal often appears to her cultists in mortal guise on other dates. When my grandmother died in an attempt to poison the heir of Firewatch, I re-examined my faith in the cult. 
My brother was a warlock of the cult of Boethia, and from what he told me, the dark warrior was closer to my spirit than the treacherous Molag Bal. Boethia is a warrior princess who acts more overtly than uh, any other Daedroth. After years of skulking and scheming, it felt good to perform acts for a mistress which had direct immediate consequences. Besides, I liked it that Boethia was a Daedra of the Dark Elves. Our cult would summon her on a day that we called uh, Gauntlet, uh, the second of Sun's Dusk. Bloody comp competitions would be held in her honor, and the duels and battles would continue until nine cultists were killed at the hands of other cultists. Boethia cared little for her cultists, she only cared for our blood. I do you think I saw her smile when I accidentally slew my brother in a sparring session? My horror, I think, greatly pleased her. I left the cult soon after that. Boethia was too impersonal for me, too cold. I wanted a mistress of greater depth. For the next 18 years of my life, I worshipped no one. Instead, I read and researched. It was in the old and profane tome that I came upon the nocturnal, uh, nocturnal the night mistress, nocturnal, the unfathomable. As the book prescribed, I called on her on the holy day, the third of Hearthfire. At last, I had found the personal mistress I had so long desired. I strove to understand her labyrinthine philosophy, the source of her mysterious pain. Everything about her was dark and shrouded, even the way that she spoke and the acts she required of me. It took years for me to understand the simple fact that I could never understand Nocturnal. Her mystery was essential to her uh, as savagery was to Boethia, or treachery was to Molag Bal. To understand Nocturnal is to negate her, to push her back, uh, to pull back the curtains cloaking her realm of darkness. As much as I loved her, I recognized the futility of unraveling her enigmas. I turned instead to her sister, Azura. Azura is the only Daedra princess I have ever worshipped who seems to care about her followers. Molag Bal wanted my mind, Boethia wanted my arms, and Nocturnal perhaps my curiosity. Azura wants all of that, and our love above all. Not our abject slavering, but our honest and genuine caring in all of its forms. It is important to her that our emotions be engaged in her worship, and our love must also be directed inward. If we love her and hate ourselves, she feels our pain. I will, for all time, have no other mistress. I was hoping to find out about Hamius Mora, but... I'll have to read this later. I just want to see if it mentioned Habeas Mora. Vampires of Radenfell, Volume 1. Excerpts. The violent antipathy of Morrowind culture towards necromancy ensures that vampires are virtually unknown in Morrowind. The temple does not acknowledge the existence of Western vampire hunting orders. Nonetheless, interviews with temple officials persuade me that Dunmer of Morrowind are experienced and knowledgeable in the handling of these menaces. On the other hand, they freely admit that even a large community of vampires might easily escape detection in the remote wastelands or in the subterranean labyrinths of abandoned strongholds and wizard towers. The Ash Vampire of Ashlander legend is not undead. Sorceries and blessings affecting the undead reportedly have no effect on these creatures. No specimen has ever been examined, and no references have ever, been linked, uh, have ever linked these legends with the known clans of Tamrielic vampires. Radenfell's three known bloodlines differ greatly in their approach to prey. The Quarug bloodline features exceptional strength and endurance, and attacks in a state of ecstatic frenzy. Uh, Anude vampires are pre uh, potent spellcasters, seeking to hypnotize victims before feeding, while the swift and agile Burn clan vampires prefer stealth and ambush, first poisoning the victim with a bite, then withdrawing to a safe distance, returning to feed only when the prey is weakened. It is supposed that vampirism is contracted from wounds received from a vampire. Since few victims survive vampiric attacks or feedings, the process of contract contracting the disease is little understood. Some have suggested that victims may willingly submit themselves to the will of a vampire, but no real evidence of this exists. During the incubation phase, lasting up to 72 hours, the vampirism disease exhibits no symptoms and may be cured by general spellcraft or cult blessings. However, during incubation, some victims have reported sleep disturbances and troubling dreams. After symptoms are exhibited, however, the disease is incurable and irreversible. Alright, that's useful information. Dark Brotherhood and Oblivion. Again, I'm just looking for any references to... Alright, so we will read on Oblivion as well. 
It is improper, however customary, to refer to the sorry refer to the denizens of the dimension of oblivion as demons. This practice probably dates to the Elysian doctrines of the first era prophet Markuth, who uh, sorry Mar Maruk, who rather amusingly forbade traffic with demons and then neglected to explain what demons are or diamonds. It is most probable that daimon is a misspelling or etymog sorry, etymological rendition, rendition of daedra, the old elven word for these strange, powerful creatures of uncertain motivation who hail from the dimension of oblivion. Daedra is actually of the plural form. The singular is daedroth. In a later track by King Hale, the pious of Skyrim, almost a thousand years after the publication of the original doctrines, the evil machinations of his political enemies are compared to the wickedness of the demons of oblivion. Their depravity equals that of Sanguine itself. They are cruel as Boethia, calculating as Molag Bal, and mad as Shagarath. Hale uh, the pious thus long-windedly introduced four of the Daedra lords to written record. But the written record is not, after all, the best way to research Oblivion and the Daedra who inhabit it. Those who traffic with daimons seldom wish it to be a matter of public account. Nevertheless, scattered throughout the literature of the First Era are diaries, journals, notices for witch burnings, and guides for Daedra slayers. These I have used as my primary source material. They are at least as trustworthy as did the Daedra lords I have actually summoned and spoken out with length. Apparently, Oblivion is a place composed of many lands, thus the many names for which Oblivion is synonymous, Cold Harbor, Quagmire, Moonshadow, etc. It may be correctly supposed that each land of Oblivion is ruled over by one prince. The Daedra princes, whose names appear over and over in ancient records, though this is not an infallible test of their authenticity or explicit existence to be sure, are the aforementioned Sanguine, Borithia, Molegbal, and Shagarath, and, uh, and in addition, Azura, Mephala, Clavicus Vile, uh, Vernima, Malakath, Hormius, or Hermaeus, or Hormaeus, or Herma, there seems to be no one accepted spelling, Mora, Nemera, uh, Jiglag, Nocturnal, Merunastagon, and Perite. From my experience, Daedra are a very mixed lot. It is almost impossible to categorize them as a whole, except for their immense power and penchant for extremism. Be that as it may, I have attempted to do so in a few cases, purely for the sake of scholast scholastic expediency. Merunus Dagon, Molegbal, Perite, Boethia, and Vernemia are among the most consistently demonic of the Daedra, in the sense that their spheres seem to be destructive in nature. The other Daedra can, of course, be equally dangerous, but seldom purely for the sake of destruction as these five can. Nor are the previous five identical in their destructiveness. Merunus Dagon seems to prefer natural disasters, earthquakes, and volcanoes for venting his anger. Oleg Bal elects the employment of other Daedra, and Boethia inspires the arms of mortal warriors. Perite's sphere seems to be pestilence, and Vernima, uh, Vernima's torture. In preparation for the next installment of this series, I will be investigating two matters that have intrigued me since I began my career as a Daedra researcher. The first is one particular Daedroth, perhaps yet another Daedra prince referred to in multiple articles of... Uh, in I still don't know how to pronounce this... Inconabula as Hercene. Hercene has been called the Huntsman of the Princes and the Father of Man Beasts, but I have yet to find anyone who can summon him. The other, and perhaps more doubtful, goal I have is to find a practical means for mortal men to pass through to oblivion. It has always been my philosophy that we do uh, sorry, that we need only fear that which we do not understand, and with uh, that thought in mind, I ever pursue my objective. So if I can find Morian Zenas's next work, I'll be happy. As much as I'd like to read the rest of this, I was going to limit myself to a few texts. Now we finished what we needed to do for the Mage's Guild. I do need to see what's happening with the Fighter's Guild. Hills north of Caldera. Is it really necessary? This that better we be talk? important, Dunmon. How are you? I've just taking a minute to make sure that those um those names weren't the same. Of me to 
try and get back to that mine. I'm busy, so if you will excuse me. I was going to explore that other, um, that other location, but at this point I think I'm going to try to get back to Belmora. And it is mildly tempting to um, go back through those uh, through those caverns. The only thing is, I don't know how much that's going to take out of me, or if I'll need to go back. <laughs> if I'll need to go back, so I'll leave it be for now. I'll also add that. Um, that Dwemer um, location is another one that I want to explore. Now I am intrigued by the idea. Oh no, this will take me back to Belmora for sure. Thank <laughs> you. 
the question is, do I want to go down this path? Well, we are exploring, so... Obviously, I didn't need to um, sleep for all of that, but it does give me more opportunities to cast more spells. The greater worry, of course, is if I, um, I encounter another assassin. I think Balmora's to the left, but let's read the, the sign. enjoying the scenery. This is definitely a place I'm going to check out later. soon.
If that's the Silt Strider, that's really neat. Obviously a little bit more of a quiet episode, but we're out of the Ashlands. We're enjoying the, f enjoying the uh, fine sunrise back in Belmora. Gonna get some rest. What time is it? Six in the morning. Just go to sleep and I'll uh, heal my wounds. And I'm not sure if I want to head out and try and complete that fighter's guild mission or if I'll just uh, call it an evening. We'll see how long it takes me to uh, complete the other tasks. It's reassuring Please, to know my stuff is there. I'm listening. And before we go any further, I think what I'm going to do is see if I can get the Thieves Guild to help me out in uh, identifying the... the bad people I'm supposed to take out. You're a new face, so what can I tell you about about Belmora? I like to swap the latest rumors when there's something juicy enough to gossip about. Or maybe if you have a little secret, maybe I have one to trade. Always carry a big jug of Sujama with you. That burst of strength, the ability to penetrate armor and deal serious damage will give you a one-time punch to the face and, uh, will give you the one-time punch to face an opponent you would normally can't handle. I found that out about invisibility potions, too. What about rumors? Everyone knows the Balmora Magistrate, Nolis uh, Atreus, is on the take. Thieves, thugs, and murderers are getting ridiculous sentences, or paying a drake and walking free. But they'll never get Atreus. He's got fat cats and family back in the city to cover him. The Legion champion, Larius Vero, over at Moonmoth Legion Fort, has sworn an oath to stop corruption, but I don't see what he can do. I'm working on it. What can you tell me about the Kimona Tong? The bad people you are looking for are the Kimona Tong. They're in Belmora. You'll find them at the Council Club Corner Club. That's the local Kimona Tong hangout. The scout would be Va uh, Vedusa Sathron. Uh, Marasa Arryn would be the pawnbroker. The thief would be Madrail Thirith. Sovor Tandril is the Savant. Thanlin Velas would be the Smith. That is very good to know. 
Thieves Guild informant tells me that if the bad people I am looking for are Kimona Tong, they're in Belmona. I'll find them at the Council Club Corner Club at the local Kimona Tong hangout. Larius Vero mentioned a scout, a pawnbroker, a savant, a thief, and a smith. The scout would be Vedusa uh, Sathrion, Marasa Aaron would be the pawnbroker, the thief would be Madriel Thirith, Silver Tandriel is a savant. Okay. Speak up. That's actually unusual. That's the whole reason I went there. There's no reason. <laughs> no need for me to inquire further. I'm listening. Uh, didn't quite mean to do that, actually. My bad. Welcome, Outlander. Have you convinced Lara Bar uh, Baraloth to join us? I do. Did. Good work, Caius. Maybe you'll give us some info, info on the Telvanni. Suppose I should find something to give you for your efforts. Here, take these spare potions. And what about my advancement now? Congratulations. You are now officially Caius the Evoker. Study diligently and perform your duties. What about further adv uh, advancement? You meet our requirements, Caius, but you've not yet completed the duties expected of a conjurer. What are those? An Argonian at the South Wall Corner Club is offering training and restoration without sanction of the guild. I want someone to stop his unsanctioned training. What did you have in mind? I've word that the Argonian is offering training and restoration at the South Wall Corner Club. This Argonian, whoever he is, does not have the sanction of the Mages Guild. Convince him to stop offering unsanctioned training. Good to know. There's someone watching me. I can tell. How may I help you, Dunmer? get some of these repair uh... just trying to find your way out of the Ashlands this time around. Have a lovely evening, and we will see you next week.